I shall call him up boy and he shall be mine and he shall be my up boy. Come here. You did not just... Boom. Particular. Mushroom. If you had a boop in the loop on the PS3 back in its heyday, you absolutely know about that game company. And yes, that game company is the name of the company. They were responsible for the revolutionary Journey game that I actually played for the first time about a month ago. No matter. If you're like me, thinking the ship has already sailed, well, yo ho ho, and a bottle of no no no, it has not! I had an excellent experience, and it's available on PS3, PS4, and even, I hear, PC? What excuse do you even have? Anyway, we're not here to talk about Journey, and the game is best left unspoiled on top of that. However, that game company had two releases on the PlayStation 3 prior to Journey. Flower, a game where you put the pedal to the metal and grow back nature, and Flow, a game where life could be simple. In Flow, you play as a little microorganism floating in, probably the ocean. The game calls it the Deep Blue, so that's a safe bet. Although sometimes the Deep Blue is orange, or pink. Gotta have some visual variety, I guess. Anyway, you swim around eating other microorganisms, growing in size, and descending deeper and deeper into the dark abyss. All to feed your insatiable appetite. As you consume various food sources, the segments on your body will fill with energy. Upon exceeding full energy, a new segment will grow out. This allows you to face bigger threats, all in effort to reach the end of level egg at the lowest depth. Eat, grow, eat some more. There are nuances, of course, but the core gameplay loop is just that, unchanging for each of the six levels. The controls even further etch the simplistic gameplay. Press X or cross to boost and move around with... With mo... Oh, I forgot this game has motion controls. Why? That's Nintendo shtick. At least they had a controller designed for this. Sony, what are you doing? Released within the very first year of the PS3's lifespan on April 14th, 2007, I can only imagine Flow passed as a game because console's recent jump to HD allowed Flow to stun its audience with organelles and particle effects rendered in pristine fluidity. It certainly is a pretty game. But that begs the question, what is there to do in this simple, albeit pretty game? It's only going to take you a few hours, if you're lucky. Well, wrapping back around to the visuals, the game has these winged foods. When you consume one, a yellow light would trail through your body, head to tail, finally freezing the game to save a screenshot to the hard drive. I would spend hours trying to set up the perfect pictures. That is a terrible example. Speaking of which, I actually still have my album, from many years ago. Here are some of my favorites. But the game had another trick up its sleeve. Trophies. We make up dastardly challenges for Nintendo games all the time, but PlayStation trophies, aka achievements, have that challenge baked into games already. These can be as simple as beat the game, there you go, a gold trophy. Some trophies are beacons of progress more than actual challenges. Why else would you get a trophy for collecting 10,000 units of in-game currency? However, there are plenty of trophies that can reach into the far, far reserves of obscure trenches to pull out some obscene-looking objectives. Flo has one singular gold trophy, and what is it? Leave the game idle at the end of the credits for 30 minutes. Not so bad, you think? It's hidden. Without the internet, you are not figuring this out. And then there's a trophy for beating a level with four people. I can understand two players, but who is playing this game in a party of four when you have Smash Ultimate? Or like, 
any other multiplayer game ever. To be fair, I would not know this game has 4 player co-op without this trophy, but all this amounted to was me turning on 4 controllers by myself and then ending the level. Yes, friendship with me, myself, and I. Okay, so the trophies in Flow are baloney. What does that have to do with anything? Well, two of the trophies are baloney because they're actually pretty difficult. <laughs> Vegetarian and cannab- wait, not like carnivore? Shouldn't it be carnivore? Oh. Oh, that's right, we do. Oh. Oh, no. What is wrong with this game? Nothing in game suggests you to pick and choose what to eat. But if you want these trophies, you need to exclusively eat only one type of nourishment, food or advanced creatures. But the key point is you must eat all of that one type. When you go vegetarian, there can't be a single cell of regular food left. That's a bit of work, but the big issue comes in with you guessed it, the motion controls. It's fairly easy to accidentally eat a creature you shouldn't, and it's worse with carnivore. The little food buggers are everywhere. And what's even worse, when you eat an advanced creature, it will split into more food. So you have to execute an escape route every time you actually consume a creature. These trophies saving grace is that we only need to achieve this goal on one level, which means we can pick the easiest of the bunch to log the hardest trophies in the game. Each of the six standard levels comes equipped with a unique creature. There's Basic Boy, his moody brother and toxic sister, Spin to Win, Dolphin, and some sort of crab oyster thing. The documentation for this game is very bare bones. I spent plenty of time trying to find official names for these things. Project not found with that slug? Slug? Eventually though, I found that your PS4 activity makes periodic updates about your progress in games. And using this, I found the names of each creature to be Snake, Jelly, Manta, Rogue, Hunter, and Puffer. I don't think the devs know what this thing is either. At first glance, Puffer or Rogue appear like the best options, since both of their abilities not only stun creatures, but also stave off food's passage into the esophagus. However, both of their levels have these spawner snakes that do reverse of what everything else does, releasing food into the ecosystem. The stream isn't infinite though, and you have to eat all the food it has in order to get the vegetarian trophy. And without any sort of in-game UI, things can get pretty confusing. I've reached the end of these levels multiple times, thinking I did it correctly, only to get nothing in return. Did the spawner actually have more food? Or did I just miss one piece of marine snow elsewhere? So it's actually easiest to be super basic, grabbing both vegetarian and carnivore on the very first level. Having the least amount of food and advanced creatures easily outweighs the benefits of any other playable creature. And likewise, this is the easiest level to grab all the other trophies. That is, except for one. Besides the level-specific trophies, there is only one trophy unoptimized for level 1. Giant. Eating everything normally will not get you the required 25 segment length. This had the potential to be one of the more interesting trophies, but you can easily succeed by just eating everything normally in level 2. Now what do I mean, normally? Well, eating food naturally grows your organism over the various layers of each level, but there's actually a trick to grow your creature faster. However, because the related trophy is so easy compared to the other trophies in here, the mechanic seems completely unknown, vastly underutilized, and well, turns a grossly simple game into something actually pretty complicated. As mentioned earlier, growing a segment is as simple as eating food to fill up your creature with energy. What makes this interesting is evolution pieces. Consuming Evo pieces will evolve your segments, stylizing them with swarf streaks and highlights. The first upgrade on a particular segment grants an extra hit point, allowing you to withstand more damages in the game's epic mop fights. However, this all comes at a subtle cost. Evolved segments require additional food to fill. It est, for every upgrade to a segment, you need one extra energy to grow a new segment. And because growing a segment resets your energy, this effect compounds. One single Evo piece while a wee little lad will hinder your growth by 10, 20, or even 30 energy over the course of one course. It's a bit hard to envision this while you play, given that it naturally takes longer to grow segments as your size progresses, 
But essentially, in order to maximize length and flow, you must beat an entire level with one health, avoiding every single evo piece while devouring all else. This is the game's ultimate challenge. Hello everyone, this is Particular Mushroom, and it's time I lay to rest a question I've held on to for over nine years now. What is the maximum length in flow? To reach the goal of maximum length, we follow two pretty straightforward steps. One, we must ardently guard our singular hit point. There is no game over in flow. However, if the player character gets eaten, it recuperates at the layer above with one health, one energy, and one less segment. You do get a consolation nom nom, but dying, in nearly all cases, will end our run. 2. Eat absolutely everything except evolution pieces and the end of level egg. There is also a bundle of optional foods that won't provide any energy. Of these, the rage flower is the only concern. While it doesn't harm the player directly, eating it turns our creature red with hostility, dramatically raising the rate of ingestion. While normally helpful, we have to consume cautiously around advanced creatures. As said prior, advanced creatures will split into food when they die, but also evo pieces. Unlike food though, the evo pieces always drop at a fixed focal point, usually the mouth. Nevertheless, we should have an escape route ready whenever we finish off an opponent. That's the basics. Any particular strategy is going to come down to which stage is most optimal. One of these stages will offer the most energy and therefore the longest length. So immediately we can throw out the snake level. It has the same number of floors, so to speak, as any other stage, but as the tutorial, the food count is relatively low. Surprisingly, the hunter and puffer stages can be discarded as well. The emphasis on advanced creature combat actually lowers the overall energy count. Floors with advanced creatures just don't compare to the dense protoplasm parties on food-only floors. So that leaves us with Jelly, Manta, Rogue, and... Credits? Okay, so the credits in Flow imitate a standard level, except there's no enemies and you consume what they call credit foods. They need some better naming in this ocean. The specialized snake you play as grows in size with just one piece of food. Yeah. We can very quickly grow to an astounding 72 length. I have to acknowledge this sheer accordion of a creature, but I don't think this really counts as a level, and it's way too easy. Still, that's a good goal to reach for. Let's see if we can beat a length of 72. That leaves us with three levels, except we have a majestic C-flap-flap -flap sized problem. Unlike every other creature that seems to grow ad infinitum, the Manta caps off pretty early and even expends its own segments to use its boost move. The Manta is so backwards that the only way to increase the maximum segments is to eat Evo pieces, of all things. Even then, it only grows a few times. So, do we have to count this level out? Not quite. For whatever reason, each player can select a unique creature in multiplayer allowing you, for example, to bring the jelly creature into the hunter level. Then you can disconnect the player who selected the hunter to play the entire stage solo as the jelly. This not only bypasses our manta problem, but allows us to play each level with the most efficient creature. So we're back to that question again. Which one is the best? The puffer again seems like a good candidate, until I found out that creature has a cap too. Once you get to a size of 21, additional food is wasted. 21, what a random number. I mean, 2 plus 1 is 3, which is the number of sides on the Aloop. Now, you might have considered the credits creature, but the devs knew that would break everything. You can't take it out of the credits, and you can't bring any other creature in. The Jelly has a cool spin move that swells the jaw to easily devour food. The opposite of what we want. The Hunter viciously attacks nearby advanced creatures. The move is guided by the tilt of your controller, but overall isn't beneficial enough for the extra effort to wrangle the controls. Now the Rogue can activate a temporary, rechargeable stealth mode. Anything the mouth touches in stealth mode is paralyzed with a yellow poison. The poison then spreads to food on contact and to creatures on consumption. Needless to say, this has incredible benefits for our run. The poison sedates enemies for easy eaten, and stealth mode makes us invulnerable to both enemy attacks and evo pieces. Poisoning an enemy before eating it even stops retaliation from nearby creatures. So the unequivocal winner is the Rogue. Quickly running through each stage with the Rogue, I got 44 at home, 52 on the Manta stage, and 56 on the Jelly stage. 
Respectable scores on each level, but the jelly stage is the clear winner. I had already assumed this was the case when I came across such large bowls of a chini de pepe soup, but it was still good to get confirmation. And we have a problem. Most of the game you face familiar creatures, small jellies, colossal snakes that fill the entire screen. The jelly stage, however, has a unique boss that only appears once in the entire game. This strange creature is like the manta with similar AI in the abstract ethereal form, but upon eating a segment, it jets off screen and releases a squadron of tiny little minions. Oh, I see, too much of a coward to fight me yourself. Afraid your wings will get bent. Yeah, I'm salty, okay? If you poison the boss, it soft locks. If you poison the minions, doesn't matter. They kill you anyway. Just to make a point of it, I went down to fight the boss with a full six gauge poison meter, and it still got me. The problem is the minions don't respect the poison. Most enemies become completely helpless when poisoned, but the minions are lethal to touch no matter what. Not to mention the poison doesn't spread and they're way faster than you in stealth mode. They just lock onto your one single health point and the moment you come out of stealth mode, rest in pepperoni. Dang. Well, it's time to be a real gamer and take off the handicaps. We have to beat this level as the jelly. The boss uses a total of 64 minions, worth 2 energy each, which is easily enough for multiple segments. Which means we not only have to beat the boss, but eat as many minions as possible. No other creature can manage this, except the jelly. And the reason makes no sense. The jelly's spin move pacifies the minions. What? They can't even damage you after this, making an easy meal. There's a catch though, that it only works up to a certain size. So we have to race down to the second to last floor and play the whole level in reverse. That has its own problems, but we're not done talking about the boss. The minions are kamikazes. Yeah. Life could be really simple. Cannibals, kamikazes, we got the whole shebang. So we have to clear out the room of regular food first so they don't kamikaze on those foods. And to top it all off, the boss counterattacks. This is when I learned the value of pause buffering. Now I'll admit this isn't pause buffering in the regular sense, but the fundamental result is the same. We're pausing the game briefly to exploit the game's code. Pausing in flow isn't pausing in the normal sense. The screen doesn't freeze, and as you know, this game has no UI. Instead, pressing the pause button immediately sends you to a cloudy, safe floor with no enemies. Being able to escape oncoming traffic with the click of a button is useful enough, but it also resets enemy states. When an enemy is attacking you, it glows that dark crystal red. But when you return from the pause floor, it's back to normal, essentially nullifying every counterattack in the game. So with all these strategies, we can finally beat that dang boss eating every minion. But now we need to finish the level with the jelly in reverse. Obviously, we lose all the benefits of the rogue. We have to watch out for enemy attacks, we need to pilot an escape route every time we eat a creature, and we have nothing to dodge evo pieces except our skill with motion controls on a PlayStation controller. But playing in reverse also removes a vantage point, the benefit of viewing the lower floor from above. I would often use this viewport to make sure I didn't land directly on an evo piece when descending. And wouldn't you know it, the jelly stage has the most evo pieces in the entire game. This makes sense given the amount of food in this level, but I digress. So do we have to just get lucky? Hope an evo piece isn't sitting there waiting on arrival? Thankfully not. Each floor is bounded by a circumference that food in most creatures refuse to cross. But we can swim to the edges of the map, no problem. So when we grab an up boy, we need to sling it towards the edge of the map. It's not a guaranteed success depending on the location of the up boy, but so far I've succeeded every time. With that, we're left with one more noteworthy chapter along this journey. This floor has 20 little snake creatures, very stubby, just a few segments in length. As you start chowing down on them, the leftovers will get picked up by the remaining snakes. No worries about the food, law of conservation of energy will keep those in order. But keep an extra eye out for the evo pieces. A segment can only evolve a handful of times, and if one of those snakes can't fit anymore, 
it'll drop a little Evo piece right in your face. Wonderful. I lost once because of this, so watch out. But that's everything you need to know. These strategies, along with impeccable movement, will get you across every floor with zero Evo pieces, and a full course dinner. Eating every single platter available will grant our jelly girth to cover almost the entire screen, and an incredible 59 segments. Using some math, 6 plus 7 plus 8, etc., that's a total of 1,876 energy to get to a length of 59. And we have 24 energy left over, so you have room for a few minuscule mistakes. I missed one food actually because a minion kamikaze to down boy, but thankfully it didn't matter. And wow, that's it! We've found the maximum length and flow, 59. And to think we had to get it with the jelly, back home on its own stage. I only have one regret. We didn't quite beat that credit score of 72, now did we? That's a bit disappointing. I really thought we could beat it. Wait. Why didn't I think of this before? Just like you can use multiplayer to get into a level with a different creature, we can use multiplayer to reset the level, allowing us to endlessly grind for food. We don't even have to beat the whole stage. Just get to the buffet, scoff it down, rinse and repeat. You have to be careful not to reset the Mega Train, but you're otherwise free to do this indefinitely. As the Jelly, you can get so big that each segment is off-screen entirely. And that mall is massive. As a snake-like creature, you can get long enough to span multiple floors, at which point the body can whip around real weird, among other strange things. At around a length of, would you believe it, 72, new segments appear invisible. The physics still work, but you can't see them. And if you run into the same species of creature, their segments are gone too. Additionally, the up and down boys will take on the color of your creature, be it white, yellow, or red. It's an entertaining way to unwind, especially coming from the hardcore jelly run. Well, the hardest core you can get in this game anyway. Eventually though, we start to hit the reality of diminishing returns, as the snake requires more and more energy to grow in length. With no signs of anything else breaking, I called it quits at a ridiculous length of 100 plus. What's the true maximum length? Who knows? But that beats our goal of 72. As much as I enjoyed flow for the zen-like feeling the developers intended, I always felt it had a bit more potential. The trophies are no joke of course, but without any sort of UI, half the difficulty feels like keeping track of your progress. While I appreciate the gesture, the frustration had me completing them just to get it over with. The maximum length challenge, by contrast, has a progress bar baked right into the creature you're controlling. I was able to focus on the task rather than the task keeping. I would know more succinctly if I had failed. This exemplifies one of the key factors in a good challenge. Execution can be as convoluted and dangerous as possible, but without clear goals and rules, execution becomes dangerous for all the wrong reasons. Reaching the maximum length of 59 and flow may not be one of those very dangerous challenges, but for such a simple control scheme, we stretched it to a length I never imagined was possible. I went in to solve a riddle from years past, and I came out presently surprised at the depth and the solution. I only wish this script was a bit more straightforward. The severe lack of terminology in this game gave me multiple headaches trying to organize this script. And here I thought life could be simple. No. No it's not. Yet, it was all worth it in the end. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into this adorable indie game, and it's still very much available if you want to try it out yourself. The Journey Collector's Edition I believe has flow bundled with it, so when you're inevitably disappointed by how short this game is, you can go play Journey, which is... Let me know how I can make these videos flow better, thanks so much for watching, and your favorite series is coming out next. Although technically it won't be everyone's favorite. It probably is most people's favorite, but it absolutely is at least one person's favorite. Although that's a good question. Is it most people's favorite? You would think that, but other videos get more views, so you can't be sure. Hmm. If you like this video, be sure to give it a nice up boy. If you didn't, well, you can give it a down boy, I guess. Look at those little microbes, they're so cute.